got a little song we say to welcome my guests. Come on, y'all sing it. Glad you came. Are you looking for something meaningful and life-changing to help you move through the challenges of life? For the next 25 minutes, then join Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church of Gastonia for an inspirational message prepared just for you. He said, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. And I want to tell you that it is a trick of the enemy to make you look at where you are and snare your nose up at God and say, God, what I got is not worthy of worship. But when you do better, that's when I'll do better. Oh, my God, can't get anybody in here. And, and, so, and so the third thing then, and let me show you how you can give, all right, is... Give on purpose. Hmm? That's how you can afford the church, is you got to give on purpose there. Paul said it in 1 Corinthians chapter number 16. He said it. Huh? He said, on the first day of the week, let each one of you lay aside storing up as he may prosper. All right? So your, your giving should already be a decision. That you have set aside what you will do once you get to church. It's already a decision. All right. He says, he said, already have it in your spirit. Already have it in your mind. Don't wait until you get to church to decide. Huh? See, when you give on absolute purpose, it does not matter what else is going on in my life, how tight things may be. I have purpose in my heart uh, that, that uh, I'm going to do it on purpose. It is deliberate, no room for chance. Huh? See, I can't leave this up to chance. If I leave it up to chance and get to church before I've made a decision, the choir might not sing my song. And don't, they, if they didn't put me in the mood, I, uh, uh, maybe, maybe I'm a little upset at what's going on in church. And so I, I'm leaving it up to chance. Maybe I don't like the direction that things are going. And so I leave it up to chance. No, he says you got to give on purpose. It's got to already be in your mind. Lay aside on the first day of the week. Somebody say on purpose. Huh? Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't wait on it. I, I've got to understand that I've got to, I've got to do what is necessary for me to be sure that I give my part. See, it's easy just to say things are tough and I can't afford to give. But when it is on purpose, all right, I will cut out what I need to in order to be deliberate with God. Y'all won't talk back today. But that's all right. That's all right. Turn over to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. And go to chapter number 8. Chapter number 8, verse number 1. How, moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. That in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. Now here Paul is speaking of a church that was experiencing trials and tribulations like many people today. Jobs and, and uh, companies closing. Inflation is high. And, and they were going to give to the church at Jerusalem. They were not saying, I can't afford the church. But notice, they participated in the giving because they made it on purpose. Are y'all listening? I want to talk to your heart today. All right, I don't want to speak condemning you. I want to beat you up as it relates to worshiping God. And when I understand that giving is a part of worship, all right? And I, and I understand that, uh, that I've got to make sure that I lay aside from the beginning. Number four is that I've got to find delight in giving. I've got to find delight in it. 
I got to find joy in it. All right? We sing in that song that we have as our offering song, I'm excited just to know I've done my part. The Lord will honor me because I've given from my heart. It's a blessing to give unto the Lord. Those who know it's a blessing to give unto the Lord, why don't you show some joy right now? You know it's a blessing. I mean, really, it's a blessing to know. I ain't trying to fool anybody. You know for yourself it's a blessing to give to the Lord. It's a blessing to know that I'm doing my part. I'm contributing. I'm making sure that ministry grow, goes forth. I'm honoring God. It's a blessing. Now, y'all, it's a blessing whenever you can go get your new outfit. It's a, it's, it's a wonderful feeling when you can go get you a new car, isn't it? But there's nothing like satisfying God and knowing that out of everything else I've done, I know I please God with what God has already given me. Is that right? I believe an amen goes right there. See, I'm not trying to hype you up. I'm talking to people who understand the blessing and the blessedness of giving to the Lord. It's a joy. All right, you got to know the joy of it. It ought not be a burden. That's why I don't want to beat anybody up. It ought not be a burden because when you get your heart in the right place, it'll be a joy. All right, you and listen, we don't give with our mouth pushed up and our face all bent out of shape, huh? Uh, uh, turn over to First Chronicles chapter number twenty nine. Let's walk in this word. This word is truth. The word is powerful. We're talking about this is stewardship month. This is the month that we are really going and looking at. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter number 29. Now in chapter 29, I won't read all of this, but David, who was king at the time, was preparing for the building of God's temple. And when you read verses 1 all the way down through, it shows how he was setting aside all of the things for the Lord. He, he set aside the things from the kingdom itself, and then he made personal investment. He was not going, God was not going to allow him to actually build it. It was going to be his son Solomon who would build the temple. But when you read down the verses, it talks about all the things that he set aside for God. And then um, you go down to verse number 9. When David showed the people and asked them now to give. Go back up to verse 6. Let me show you. He says, then the leaders of the father's houses, leaders of the tribes of Israel, the captains of thousands of hundreds with the officers over the king's work, Offered willingly. All right? They didn't have a, they didn't, they, nobody had to push them. They gave for the work of the house of God 5,000 talents and 10,000 darises of gold, then 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze, and 100,000 talents of iron. And whoever had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord into the hand of Jael, uh, the Gershonite. And then verse number nine. Then the people rejoiced. Now, look at this. Now, is that the word? So you thought I was just hyping you a minute ago. No, the Bible said, then the people rejoiced. Why? For they had offered willingly because with a loyal heart, they had offered willingly to the Lord, and David also rejoiced gladly. See, when it comes to giving, there ought to be such a joy, such enthusiasm, because I'm participating in the expansion and the upbuilding of God's kingdom. I don't have anybody. And the reason I can do it with joy is because it was not mine in the first place. And I thank God that he only asked for a portion of that that I have, I have. My God, maybe I would be upset if he asked for everything. Okay, maybe. But listen, he says, he says you begin by just giving 10% of that that I've given to you. And the people did it with joy. They were excited. That's why whenever it's time to give, we ought to get excited. That's why the song said, I'm excited. 
Huh? Wake up in here. Don't be going to sleep on me now because we're talking about giving. See, if I was talking about your receiving, you'd be shouting. If I was talking about doors opening for you, you'd be praising. If I was talking about you getting ready to get you something, you'd be cutting flips. But we're talking about that. Come on, wake to bump your neighbor, say, neighbor, wake up in here. The enemy will try to rock you to sleep so you will miss. Huh? Because I know, I know, I know because the enemy said all that preacher wants is your money. Huh? But I want to I wanna step on that rascal's head today and crush that spirit because I'm speaking Bible all right so you got to find delight in giving and then when you look at this thing uh, many people cannot find delight in giving to the Lord because they can't physically see the Lord and they can only physically concretely see humans and they equate it with giving to humans and that's what, that, see, I know that, you, I found you, didn't I? I found you. I don't see God. All I see is the preacher. So I'm, it looks like I'm giving to him. Huh? Now listen, they pay me a salary like they do anybody else on a job. When we, when we give in worship, I don't go back in the back and say, you know what? Let me give me an arm load of that. And let me get some. No. Huh? And listen, I know that the other day, Bishop Jakes was on TV and he was talking about how, um, you know, he, he was not in agreement with this whole Preachers of L.A. thing. And he was talking about how the church, uh, that when he came, what he had, and he doesn't have to, and, and all because of his book sales, his promotions, all, I don't have all that. <laughs> I, sold about, I sold about 200 of my books. I'll, and so... Yes, I get a salary. I'm not going to tell you. Yes, I get a salary. All right? And, and yes, they, 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 I, get, I get income from, from the work of ministry. All right? But you got to understand that you see me, but that has nothing to do with your honoring God. I can't get anybody. And let me tell you something. I don't care who has a Rolls Royce. I don't care who has a $10 million house. I don't care how they exploit that. When I read in the Bible, my responsibility, if there's somebody who's been playing games and who hasn't been doing right by what God has told us to do, that's their problem, that's their issue. It's still my responsibility to follow every precept of the word. And my God, I'm going to honor God. Come on, somebody. And God holds me as accountable with my giving as he holds you. Huh? I don't have anybody. Y'all won't talk. See, the only thing you can see is me. You don't see God. All right? And so you, sometimes you have a problem with who you see, and you can only equate it because you're in the flesh. Huh? Mm-mm-mm. See, when, and, and, and so that'll take your joy, huh? That'll take your joy. And whenever, whenever you find joy, you look beyond your present poverty, affliction, or shortage. And when you delight in giving, you will give out of your everything. I don't have anybody. And we need to teach our children how to give to the Lord. We need to make sure they're learning that if they, if they do a little job, if they get a little allowance, if they cut some grass, whatever they do, we ought to make sure that they take a tenth part of it and re train them up in the way that they should go. Isn't that right? So when they're old, they will not depart from it. Number five. Number, well, I tell you what, let me, let me, let me, let me just give you this. Um, go back over to 2 Corinthians and go back to chapter number 8. I just want to give you something in stewardship month to hold on to. Something that's going to bless your life. See, you got to check. You got to have a change of mindset. I told you we got to manage our mindset. Isn't that right? Huh? And so 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. Go down to verse number 3. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing. Now, he said a minute ago that they had some, some deep poverty in verse 2. 
All right, and a great trial of affliction. Yet out of the abundance of their joy and even their deep poverty had abounded in the riches of their liberality. They were liberal even with the challenge. See, if you get your heart right, if you get your attitude right and get your spirit right, God will cause you to be able to do what he requires of you. I don't have anybody. This was not normal. All right? It says, according to their ability and beyond their ability, verse 3, they were freely willing. That's not natural, but that's supernatural. And when, you, when we stop complaining about what we don't have, what we can't afford, and start having a willing heart, God will cause some supernatural things to happen in you. I don't have anybody. He, beyond your power, the devil will tell you, you know, you better hold on to that. When you do that, you're saying, God, I can't trust you. I wish I could get somebody. And you got to understand that. Put this in your note. I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to read it. But Proverbs 11, 24 through 25, go back and read it. It says that, that there's one uh, who gives and releases what's in his hand and it comes to blessing. There's another that holds on to more than he should and it leads to poverty. You think by withholding what God says give, it's going to cause you to be blessed better. But the reality is that it brings you to a broken place when you hold back. I can't get anybody on this side to say amen. amen. <laughs> All right. Number five. Say he's about done. Number five, how can I afford the church? Well, you got to sacrificially give yourself. I got to give me. Mm, mm, mm. Huh? See, you will never really give to God what you should without first giving you. All right? Now, they made sacrifices in the Old Testament and they presented them when they got to the place where the altar was. And now that we don't have that altar system, when you look over in Romans chapter number 12, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, you got to be giving Yourself. In other words, not giving of yourself. I'm talking about you got to give God you. When you give you wholly to God, it releases you to release whatever would otherwise have held you up. Your time, your talent. Come on, somebody. See, my possessions will always mean more to me and for me when I have not first given myself to God. I understand very well I don't care what the car looks like, it's going to rust. I don't care what it looks like, it's going to get old. I don't care what the money you have, it, money can't do everything. Huh? Money can answer everything, but it can't do everything. And I understand that the trouble is when I have not given me to God, I assign more importance to my money than I should. The rich young ruler could not give up his possessions because he had not really given himself to the Lord. He assigned more of importance to his possessions and he depended on it rather than trusting God. And so when you trust your stuff more than you trust God, it makes you want to uh, hold on to what you have rather than trusting God. But how many of you know that if you properly be a good steward over what God has given you, God will cause more even to come into your possession. I don't have anybody in here. Huh? All right, let me go. Number, number six. How can I afford the church? I know that I must abound in giving. All right, go back over to 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. I think y'all got the point. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end. It says, verse 7, But as you abound in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in your love for us, see... That you abound in this grace also. He's talking about giving. All right? Now, I know you're singing. 
I know you, I know you work a uh, parking lot. I know you're a musician. I know you're an usher. I know you serve in whatever capacity, mission, whatever you serve. I know it. He said, I, make sure that you're abounding. Abounding means to go up and above and to keep being uh, prosperous in that abounding. He said, but make sure, see to it. That you abound in this grace also. We want to be good at everything we do, but we got to make sure we abound in our giving. Is that right? And then the final number seven is we can afford the church because we have a divine example. All right? Giving is not something that the church has established. But it is of divine origin. God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit has a giving spirit. Look at verse number 9 of 2 Corinthians chapter 8. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. All right? So we understand that first God gave us Jesus. We were lost, we were helpless, we were condemned, but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. In this divine act of love, Jesus, who was rich, became poor, not for his sake, but for who? Our sake. Huh? See, Jesus, the Bible says, he, he emptied himself of glory and took upon uh, uh, humanity to come down to save us he was a giver come on somebody all right and so what the Lord has done in our lives we ought not hesitate to be a giver because we have the divine example Jesus said give and it'll come back to you good measure pressed down shaking together and running over will men pour into your bosom do I have anybody in here so number one, I need to say giving is a part of worship. Number two, I can give as God has prospered me. I don't have to worry about trying to give what you give. All right? I don't have to worry about trying to give what my neighbor gives. Give as to what he has prospered me. If I only make $100 a week, he only expects me to give as he's prospered so far. All right? Number three, I can give how? On purpose. When you do something on purpose, huh? it's intentional. Thank you. Number four, I got to find what? Delight in giving. Number five, I need to sacrificially give myself. Me, me, me. God, do you, do, have I given myself away? We sing that. Number six, I must abound in the grace of giving. And then number seven, I give because I have a divine example in my heavenly father. He's a giver. Come on, somebody. Didn't we just finish singing a few minutes ago about the blessing of God, how good he is, huh? How he sacrificed. Listen, there is no reason that the people of God, I don't care how it's exploited. I don't care what the enemy tells you on your job. I don't care what people say as it relates to you giving to an individual we have a responsibility, a divine responsibility to adhere to the word of God. And God's word tells us and gives us the requirement. And so as a good steward of the manifold blessings, I've got to, I've got to become purposeful in my giving. I can't let this, I've been playing and taking chances. The Bible says, bring into the storehouse 10% of that that you've earned. Given to the Lord is not an option when you are obedient to God. And when God blesses you, see, you got to understand that some of the reason that we don't bring the 10% and we, we're afraid of the 10% is because we messed up the 90%. See, God, I got this car payment now. And I wanted that, I wanted one that cost a little more. And I can't give to you now because I got this car payment. And so we put car above God. God, I wanted to live in this house. I wanted this apartment. I wanted this furniture. And now I can't give to you. So let me penalize you so I can live 
like I want to. That's backward. That's wrong. That's not spiritual. And so we got to make sure then, because listen, the truth be told, somebody's saying right now, I want to. I, my heart, I want to. God, I want to do right. But I just don't see how. It's going to take faith and trust in God. But it's right. It's right for ministry. It's right for my household. I want the blessedness of God on everything. I'm, I want him to blow on it. Not blow it away. I want him to blow on it. His, his blessedness. There are a whole lot of things we can get, but not have the blessedness of God on it. You understand that? Because some people will say, I don't give and I, I'm being blessed. You may have things and all, but analyze it. Is it, really, is it really bringing peace to your household? Do you feel fulfilled in your life? Or is it just empty stuff? Without the blessedness of God on it, it's a lot of empty stuff. But I don't know about you. I want the blessedness of God on everything I have. Truth be told, everybody's had some challenges. But we got to still honor God. Honor God. And be good stewards. This is Stewardship Month. And I pray that our heart and our spirit will be right with God. Amen. Give God a praise right now. Come on. Good steward of the manifold blessings of God. I get joy. I don't want to beat anybody up. That's why I didn't want to get real preachy. Because I don't want to beat anybody up. I want you to see this as a wonderful privilege and an opportunity to honor God with giving. And the only way that you're going to really honor God is, first of all, I've got to make sure I line up with giving myself to him. If you're here today, let us all stand. If you're here today and you want to give yourself to God, God, I, I want to give you, I want to give you total control of my life. I want to make sure that I am connected with you. Everything I am, I'm yours, Lord. My heart, my mind, it all belongs to you. The truth of the matter is that God, without you, I would be nothing. I'd be like a ship without a sail. I thank you that I'm not all I'm going to be. But I thank you, God, that who I am, you made me. And I thank you that whatever I have, it belongs to you. And when I understand that, I can walk uprightly with God. If you're looking for dynamic worship, inspirational teaching, and a friendly atmosphere, you can visit us on Sundays at 221 West Bradley Street in Gastonia, North Carolina. For more information about our ministry, you can call 704-865-9016. To order your personal copy of today's message or any other broadcast, please call 704-865-9016 and indicate the broadcast date. Or you can just visit us online at www.friendshipgastonia.com. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast with Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church. Make sure you join us next week at the same time. And remember, let God take control and let the Spirit flow.